I think I'll do an overview and then you can just turn this off if it's not that interesting. What you need for this are O-rings or what you might need are some O-rings. You might need some ga some uh, um, stem O-rings and then some case back O-rings. These are both from AliExpress. Uh, 15, oh wait, four, $5 including shipping I think for for these and $4 including shipping for these. Yeah, let's take it back, $7. Um, and then you need some kind of uh, lubricant for the for both of the for, for for both the stem and the and the o-rings and this is this is based on Bergeon's 7055 which is silicone silicone grease in with these with on a sponge and then you stick the o-ring in there and twist it and that greases it up so that it has it's it's uh makes it better for water resistance um and i bought a huge tube of this when i was doing some waterproof camera stuff uh, it's basically the same thing. Uh, PTFE silicone grease. PTFE is is uh, Teflon. It's a mixture of silicone and Teflon, and it doesn't melt um, at high temperatures. So, like this is the um, the PDF from this stuff that I have a tube of, which I treated the I treated this with. Oh, so the thing I was saying about this. This is a copy of something sold by Bergeon. You can buy the Bergeon version, or, you, or these Chinese versions are um, four dollars, including shipping. Or one sixty-seven times two, less than two dollars. Um, and then you can grease it up with the with more. It comes with grease on it, but you can, if you need to, you can add grease to it. Um, the grease, the elbow grease, the big thing that I have. Uh, which is the same thing. It's basically um, non-corrosive, chemically inert, hydrolytically stable, which means water, not water soluble. Uh, it's called an O-ring lubricant. Um, it has uh, it's odorless, non-toxic, and non-melting. So if you, if you if you put it on a watch and you leave it in the hot sun and it gets up to 120 degrees or something, it's not going to like melt because it's grease. Uh, it's not going to melt or run into the watch. Um, so that's the main aspects of why silicone grease is good for doing this. And if you, if you, if you touch it, it feels kind of, it feels kind of sticky. Um, so it's, it's not a lubricant so much as it is like, uh, I gotta wipe my finger. Why am I so stupid? <laughs> I'm gonna wipe it on my sock. Um, so uh, of course it's a lubricant, but it's not like oil that keeps things spinning and friction free. It's it's uh, it's specifically for waterproofing things. Okay, so. We move our bands first, bracelet. So Mikosa, um, like I said, this is actually just a Helvetia. I should use my case clamp.
Yeah, I did put this on pretty tight. Every time the wrench slips, I'm a, I'm making a mistake. It's like, it should not slip. I should not ever let it slip. And yet I do. Um, okay. So this was, uh, there's your movement. Uh, for this, this O-ring, I just, I just based it on, uh, how well it worked. So this was a 0.7. This is like a, a round O-ring. It's 0.7, um, millimeter diameter. And the kit that I bought had, these are all 0.7, I guess. Yeah, I bought a kit with um, different, I bought some fives, sixes, sevens in terms of thickness. And um, so 0.7, oh, so, the, so you, The other, the other thing about this is like when, because this was an old watch, this is what came out of it. So it was a flat plastic gasket and taking it out broke it and it's quite brittle. I've seen more brittle ones before, but um, so then replaced it with this. I measured it was like 30.5 and I used a 30 millimeter diameter and it stretches a little bit, but that's fine. Um, and so what you do is when the O-ring is new, it needs some of this grease on it. So you do that and then it's ready to go. And that grease will let it slip enough. Like I said, it's, it feels sticky on your finger. What I mean is it feels slightly sticky compared to like oil. But um, but it's also, it is grease. So when you, when you tighten that O-ring on the, um, when you tighten it down, it slips around enough that it doesn't just grab too harshly and then um, bind, which can also happen with O-rings and metal. Okay, so then the other thing that you want to do is um, remove the crown. And stem. And then what I would do if, if, if this wasn't already tested, I test when I, when I do the relooms on these watches, I take the movement out. Is this movement actually held in there? No. Okay. So this movement is on a movement ring that doesn't even doesn't, it's easy to remove it. So. Um, yeah, that's, that's actually great. Cause I can show you, you might have to take out two screws and the little tabs to remove the movement from, uh, other vintage watches. But for this one, you can just, uh, I just pulled it out. Um, because the movement ring holds the movement. Now, when, when you have a vintage watch that the, that the, the rubber is completely gone, you'll get no resistance when you place it when you place the stem and crown into the stem 
shaft or whatever that's called. So I can feel that there's a, there's a little bit of resistance on this one. And you can see that the, that the O-ring is kind of intact. So that means that with a little bit of grease, that O-ring is watertight. I wouldn't go to any deep depth with it, but so then you can put a little bit of this grease in there. Or, or conversely, you could put it on the end of the Put it like that. Um, and then that will just help make sure that it has the, the added benefit of a little bit of grease in addition to the O-ring. Oh, so the other thing I do is I'll put the watch together like that. Might as well just do it. So you can put the case together like this, and then you can drop it in water. Mm. I don't have a plan for getting it out of the water. So if you if you're nervous about testing it with the movement inside you can test it like this And if there's a problem you'll see quite quickly if it's not waterproof the, the you'll start to get water drop inside the inside the case So you can see that's still dry inside. So now, The problem is there's a little bit of water on the rubber seal because the because it's just been in water. So now I'm at a little bit of risk of um sealing in a few molecules of water unless I let it dry for a minute. Okay, so now
That looks dry. So that's pretty pretty tight on there. And the reason I went with the 0.7 is because even with the 0.7 in there, you're getting down to the point where that case back is pretty much, like if you put too thick of a gasket in it, you won't get that, you won't get the case to close that well. So. But if you put too thin, it'll close and the and the gasket won't be compressed enough. So um, I I could tell that this one is something thicker than like a 0.5. And um, just to contradict myself, I'm sure that this is not 0.7. This is 0.5, but it's flat and the O-ring is not flat. So the O-ring needs to squeeze in, and fill that, that square area because this has, a, this has, it's only 0.5 thick, but it's almost a millimeter in width. So when you stick a 0.7 millimeter O-ring into that same area, it, it, it crushes down and fills the space that this used to fill. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so this one, we can put the strap back on it or the bracelet. I just finished editing like these really long real-time videos of the rebuilding of this tiny IWC watch. And I'm, now I'm really conscious of how the whole real-time thing is ridiculous. <laughs> so I'm, I'm trying to be a bit faster, but... I can edit, of course, as well, but being fast doesn't really help with being careful. Okay, but there, this is now back together again. That's the side that I put the, uh, the release on. Okay, so that's number, that's the first one. Now this watch, uh, this watch is special because it, it used to be, like I said, I bought this for $25. It had a cool dial on it, but, but it was, um, you can see it, it didn't have the, um, it didn't have the, the magnifying lens and the crystal. So this is a new crystal I put in it from Cousins. And also the hands are different because I'll show you why in a second. Anyway, the this had a scratch right here that turned out when I, uh, this is on the most of these scratches are just on the crystal, but this had a had some corrosion on the dial. And the more I cleaned it, the more I ruined the dial. So eventually I just destroyed the dial. So so that's why I went dialless with it. But the. Um, I bought a second one and that's why the hands are different. Um, I bought this one for $35.
And I could tell it was kind of the same period. It was also, um, it says Flurrier on the, on the label. Um, there you go. So you can see that one has the hands that I, I used here. Um, they have Onyx plus Loom. And then this, it's hard to tell, but this is like a, a arrow style second hand. Um, so in order to get this watch into the condition it's in, I kind of I mix the parts together from these two watches. For example, that back, this this back is I use the back from the other one. Um, and the reason I couldn't I couldn't use the dial from that, which I still have, is that one of one was a pie pan this one was a pie pan and this one was not a pie pan and because the pie pan that has different um the movements come with different hand heights uh depending on if they're a pie pan or not so the that movement for as things went along and i and i was mixing and matching things i ended up um using the non pie pan movement and kind of in combination mixing parts. So I ended up not being able to accommodate that dial is the point. Okay, so, but the, but there's something really cool about this watch, which is, um, well, there's two things. One is I really, I, I, I spent so much time working with it that I kind of messed up those hands. They're pretty scratched up and I want to redo that. But the, um, I happened to find vintage hands, new old stock vintage hands for this movement on eBay. So eventually I'm gonna receive those and I'm gonna I'm gonna change the hands out to something that's very similar um, and kind of original vintage. And then So we're still, the, the reason for this exercise is to um, talk about waterproofing. But this watch is super cool because I always want to do this. And as I was playing around with these two movements, I figured out that this this case had this ability to put a terabyte um, micro SD card inside of it. So with that, uh, I can I can have like a backup, like a terabyte pretty much covers my life's work <laughs> in terms of like, um, things that are really important to me. Uh, I have, I think, 360 terabytes of storage in my office, but one terabyte, I can store things that are really important, um, documents, uh, designs, uh, things that are really important to me. And I think that, and it, and it also is um, encrypted and um, and it's not the only copy of things, obviously, but it's really, it's. I think it's so cool to like have a terabyte of storage in a vintage watch like that as a backup. So like, if, you, if I lose the watch, it's no big deal. The data is lost. I can make another copy. But if I lose my home or everything else, I have like this this actual copy of the data on me. Something about the child in me loves it. OK, so then um, the, the next step with this is to, you can see there's it's a 2472 movement. ETA 2472. Um, the same basic rules apply here. On this watch, let me see if I can just show you this. On this watch, I ordered a flat O-ring from Cousins that uh, I don't. I don't have those here. They're in the back, but. Basically, you can measure, you can see what you think you need or see what was in there in the first place. And then you can go on Cousin's website and um, you can order up. So this was also a 30.3 30, 30 millimeter inside diameter. And then 
the outside diameter of that o-ring is thirty one point five I think yeah so on cousin's website you can you they have case back o-rings that I think you buy three for a few dollars or something so here you get from China you get hundreds for three dollars from from cousins you get three pieces for three dollars or something I'm I'm rough I'm estimating but you can also just get exactly what you need and it, and uh, so that's what I did when I did this um, and then same exactly the same technique I use the same technique also because I replaced the crystal on this uh, movement I use the same technique of making sure it was waterproof without the movement inside and then um, and then sealing it all up testing it in water testing it without the movement but I'm just because I opened it I'm just going to re-grease this <clears throat> before I put it back I didn't really explain it, but the um, that micro SD card in there is uh, it's attached to a piece of double stick, kind of industrial double stick tape, and uh, you can remove it like five or ten times and stick it back on there, and it, it the tape remains sticky enough. Um, so that's that's what's holding it in there. <clears throat> Ugh. Should be able to hear the automatic movements working fine. I can feel it. So the hand stacking on this, I, I want to do a separate video about this because I made videos while I was working on this, but it requires a lot of editing. I don't think that'll be a real time thing because all that work with the dial and everything and then getting the hands to work out. Normally, you can't just remove the dial from a from a, a watch like this because the dial has there's a spring behind the dial which you can see the corner of there or one tab. Um, the dial actually holds that hour hand gear in place and holds it down. And if you just remove the dial, that will pop up. So then, in order to to make it work without the dial, I had to use the second hand um, in the stack of the hands there. Let's see if I can get that to focus. I had to use the seconds hand to kind of hold everything else down below. And I, I made a tiny little washer uh, underneath the seconds hand that holds the minute hand down and then the minute hand holds the hour hand down. And uh, that's how that's what keeps the hour hand gear from popping up and and moving off of the date mechanism which is what happens and it also moves off of the drive for it and then you uh the hands just go crazy and you lose the time but that's all stacked in a way now that it that it works consistently without the dial okay so that's that um that was supposed to be about waterproofing, which it was, with some added notes. And um, I, I may do another 
some more another video where I do because I have a bunch of watches and they all need to be checked for waterproof and some are more complicated like this uh, Seiko Belmatic because it has it has a, a button to turn off to set the alarm and to turn off the alarm and to quick set the date um, I did I, I already I already did waterproof rebrought I have a couple of those I did water I changed the o-rings using a kit for that watch a while back in the last year but I need to open it up again and and grease it and and check it I wouldn't go in the I wouldn't take it in, underwater without testing it first Okay, anyway, that's it for today. Have fun making sure your vintage watches are waterproof for the summer.